Hey everybody, welcome back to Black Arrow Gaming. I'm Bob, and we're here for another episode of my sixth Age of Wonders 3 Advanced Strategy Series. I've got, uh, this is why I like saving the game, uh, right before ending my turn, because you guys usually catch a lot of things. Um, a quick little thing I can fix here, uh, thank you to Civ 5 Addict and Impregnable. This unit, uh, my army distribution up here, I have to remember my unit, my heroes, all have that, um... Inspire loyalty buff, lowering upkeep of units in the army. So there's no reason for me to not take this tier two unit, uh, which is Blight Doctor and move him into that army. Saves me four gold per turn, free money. So thanks for catching that, guys. I need to, I'll try to be better about remembering to do that going forward. Um, comments for this week include uh, P. Williams and Impregnable both uh, said that I need to have a unit present to raise the terraform per se which kind of makes sense i suppose basically if i wanted to stop this from terraforming that landscaping pit there's a raise icon right there but i'd have to you move a unit onto it and essentially raise my own strategic spell which doesn't seem very intuitive but that's apparently how it works i can't really confirm on camera right now because i can't move anything onto that tile at the moment but that would be the uh, solution to what I was talking about in the last episode. Um, a quick tip from Miko Heiskanen, or Heiskanen, uh, was that, as you can see, I've got this grid on, and you guys probably noticed that as soon as I started recording um, these hexagonal grids. You can turn that on and off with Control G. So that makes it a little easier to count out spaces for a new city. Speaking of new city, I've decided where this next one is going to go. And uh, it's going to end up actually going right here, I think, on this tile. I can actually build the fort for it on this turn and then start upgrading the fort on the next turn and we'll be able to get uh, the, um, the, the Vault of Knowledge in there. The reason I'm building it on this tile is because it's within range of that Lich Castle. It's long range, but I think it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine spaces. So max city size or almost max city size plus warlord, um, uh, the the bonus that the warlord strategic spell that increases I'm blanking on it but increases the size of the city's borders. Um, so that's probably where I'm going to put it. It's also still within range of the dungeon, but the reason I want to put it here is because there might be other stuff down here that it could reach out to as well. I do want to before making a final decision take this guy. And quickly, he's got three. He started with 24, so I could go to where he's 12 out and just like scout to make sure that he's not. Okay, he could go one more space. Scout to make sure I'm not missing out on anything up here, and I am not. That is really all that's up there is that dragon pit and then this, um, which is actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's yeah, that's too far away from the other city. But uh, this city, it'll be in range. So I want to try to put my city in a good spot to, to get as much stuff as possible. And I kind of like having it here anyway, because it puts it further away from this cities. So their borders won't interfere. They're not going to as, clash as much as both cities grow. So I'm going to bring him back down here. If there's anyone with enough movement to explore down that way, that would also probably be good but I don't think anyone really has enough to make anything any meaningful. Let's see, 19, so it's effectively 18. He could go three spaces. Uh, I can, I mean, I can go down a little further and kind of just take a peek. It's 13. That would be, uh, moving onto a road would actually be two, leaving him with one, two, three. Enough to get back, he could, I could do this. That's about as far as I can see with him and still get him back with his stack on this turn. So nothing guaranteed for sure down there. But I can also dig out more of these cavern walls and add um, wetlands on this area too. So I kind of like this spot better. The other nice thing is that I can actually take the builder and move and go ahead and just build the fort now. If I can get just a little bit more money, I'm, I, I need just a a tiny bit more um, okay that's that might not be worth doing quite yet though no this is not worth doing yet this, well, I mean this quest is sorry um, 
I could try to squeeze out a little bit of extra money to build the fort on this turn, but the more important thing is that I can buy this city on the next turn. And the fort, if I put it right here, doesn't really do me any good immediately because I need to increase the size of the fort uh, before I can get the Vault of Knowledge within its territory if I'm putting it on that spot. So we're not going to worry about that at the moment. Um, from Tarsak, my leader has two sets of boots. Uh, I think, yeah, that that is correct. I think I've got two of these sturdy stompers of the deckhand. I'm going to send one to the Theocrat and get it on the next turn. Good call there, Tarsak. Thank you. Also recommended getting my Theocrat over here to start converting stuff ASAP. That I am working on. Um, I am going to try to build a bridge across the water on the next turn. I know I'm... Um, this was a comment from... Uh, I think it was... Blurry Inner Vision. Yeah, I needed seafaring to build a bridge first. I am working on that right now, basic seafaring. Um, that I will... Get uh, when I clear this because I'm going to get a research boost for clearing the structure on the next turn. So I will get basic seafaring and then be able to immediately build a bridge. And then the Theocrat will be able to cross and uh, all my armies will be joined up again. Um, from Impregnable, Slayer's Doubt. Suggested using Slayer's Doubt on the flyers. I'll get to that later in this episode, hopefully. Uh, clear Eldritch Pit soon. There will be more animals convert and Rogue has better things to do. I agree. This Eldritch Pit can't really just sit here spawning crap. I need to probably clear that. The Theocrat, or the, getting the Druid down there and getting the Snakes would be nice. But I'm not really anywhere near being able to get my Druid back as far as I know right now. So I do agree with that. Um, also suggesting getting Smite and Casting Points for the Theocrat. Uh, I also think, I think that's a good idea too. Um, Divine Justice Stars doesn't come until level 11. He's only level 7. So I can get more uh, casting points for him as he levels up. And I think I probably will turn him into kind of a spell caster. The Theocrat has a lot of good combat spells. So I'll try to take advantage of that. And um, Daniel Moe suggested not forgetting to use Cure Disease on the Blight Doctors. Apparently one of my units got poisoned. Uh, one of the wargs, I guess. Um... I think there was some confusion because he was talking about them being poisoned over the turns on the strategic map, which I don't think is possible, uh, but I'm double checking to make sure nobody has like an ongoing debuff. But regardless, I did get a unit poisoned during one of my battles, and I could have used Cure Disease on these Blight Doctors to patch it up. Just another way to get XP that I missed out on. So thanks Daniel for pointing that out. And I think that's more or less it, aside from Impregnable and Sarah Feingold both suggesting that I build a fort on these structures as soon as possible to get gold out of them, which I will do. I uh, might actually do that before the fort here because these are more of an immediate benefit. I haven't even started building a settler yet for this city, so um, we'll get to that ASAP. Uh, let's see here. These guys, I think... Okay, they're out of movement. I'll move these guys actually here, I think. And uh, let those guys come running at me, because I am going to start moving on at Eldritch Pit. The Rogue, I think, can handle that. And then uh, explore more to the east. Maybe clear out some territory here. Possibly go after the Haunted Boneyard. We'll have to wait and see about that. I think the Theocrat would be a better match for that. But as things develop, uh, we, will, we will see what happens. I am going to not cast any spells on this turn. We're just going to end the turn for now. This city should be growing pretty soon, but the Vault of Knowledge doesn't do me any good until I can get uh, my king to have Blood Brothers. As I mentioned, I am not going to be taking chance of getting petrified by Watcher's Doomgaze if I can get 100% spirit protection on my army. So as soon as he's got that, he'll be heading back over there with his army and dealing with that. So the undead are going to go ahead and attack me here. This will finish off my quest for the uh, computer. Let's do a manual combat. This should be not too difficult since I got that extra group of uh, that extra, extra bunch of units, which is really nice. Um, back everybody up and get the uh, rogue. Let's just give everybody together, and uh, except for the untouchables. Well, they can come too, but they suck. I'm not counting on them doing a whole lot during this battle. I would like to get that Butcher more towards the center here. It's one of my better units for dealing with the undead. 
uh, just because he's decently tough and he has for a strike. Uh, they're going to be charging me, and I think four of them, if I remember correctly, are infantry with only two archers. Because he has first strike, I want to lure them into attacking. The swarm darters are going to do very little damage to these undead, but every little bit helps, I guess. Um, no one really cares about the intentable stench in this particular battle. All right, I'm going to kind of have a setup sort of like this with the wargs on the flank, the leader in the middle, and the swarm darters in the back, and then probably him right here. Uh, honestly, I think I might shift positions a little bit and get the untouchable more towards the front, because if he dies, it's not the end of the world. Although, I would like to use him as a scout if possible. Um, the trick here is, I think, not to lose anybody. Charging out might be a bit dangerous. I think I want them to come to me, so I'm probably going to, let's see, can I, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and right now, probably, yeah, the Swarm Darters aren't going to do hardly anything. Better, I think, to cast Weakening on somebody, They're the only really, the, the really the only unit I can hit. Uh, the Archers are going to light something up, but that's fine. I'm going to move the Untouchable down and over this way, so kind of got a fence blocking that direction. I don't really want those guys attacking the wargs, so I'll move them back a little to keep them on the flanks. And uh, the orc in the middle should be fine. I've got blind, I've got quick dash. Uh, blind might be nice to throw on one of those archers. Yeah, I think, I think that actually would be very nice to have on that archer. Let's... Okay, never mind. Can't do that. Maybe should have saved a quick dash then, because that was guaranteed to work. I was just kind of hoping the 75% would roll in my favor. Now they're all going straight after the orc, so now I have to save him. Okay. Tried to get too fancy with that blind, I suppose. Okay, he can sprint and get out of there, so I don't need to do anything too crazy trying to save him. I'm going to have them build up a charge, I think, and go after the Revenant Infantry, just so they take less damage in retaliation. Nice, okay. can back you guys up because Swarm Darters don't care about line of sight. And those guys are now weak to poison, so that's the one I want to hit with the Swarm Darters. You can sprint, so to get away from him. Might have him use Acid Darts. But first, let's deal with this guy. And deal as much damage as I can. I think I'm going to charge this guy into that one. The untouchable actually should probably try to spit this guy to death. I'm not going to be able to, but I can get close. I think I'm going to move this unit here, have the warg come up here, most likely do an overwhelm charge. Okay, good. That's working out. That That's working. I forgot those guys had overwhelm. That's working out very nicely against those Revenant infantry shields. Um, that guy's sort of more safely holed up in there. I think he could kill that Revenant infantry. Yeah. I'll have him kill that guy. And that leaves everyone in a pretty solid position and even allows me to throw a couple more darts. I think I'm going to leave everybody more or less where they're at. There's only the two archers. They're not going to do much. Oh, if they had all ganged up on one unit, they might have. Oh, they're going to try to get the... Ooh, that was close. They almost got that guy. My Blight Doctor. You know what? If they had all ganged up on the Blight Doctor, I might have lost him. 
I was looking at this wrong. I was thinking one of those two initially. I was thinking was a um, infantry. I didn't forgot that there's two archers. So I may have just gotten a little lucky there, but let's make the most of it. Um, you don't have any spell. Yeah, you don't have enough to cast any spells. Okay. Let's just have you get aggressive up in the space. I don't have any healing on this group, which is kind of a problem. You go all the way around, stab him in the back. You might be able to finish him. Nope, not quite. Oh, I was hoping to use a different unit for this, but that's just fine. Oh, I've still got, of course, I've still got my rogue, so I'll be okay. In fact, I'm going to have the rogue finish that one off. I just want him out of the way. That will allow the Blight Doctor to weaken the archer back there. Which frees you up, you up to do even more damage. And swarm darters to finish off. And that other one's not going to be able to move. He'll probably melee. Yeah, he'll just melee the warg. Okay, took a be decent chunk of damage here, but I am okay. Kind of wish I had saved quick dash now because a little healing would be nice. But uh, it is what it is. Oh, I could have maybe done something with the Blight Doctor there. I don't... Well, actually, no, I didn't enchant anyone, and I couldn't use Cure Disease on anyone, so I guess I couldn't have. All right, I'm going to take this reward, and I'm going to check and see. Okay, 194 gold. All right, guys, we finally have this city in my empire. It's about, about dang time, I suppose. Race governance level up. Uh, Swarm Darters. Oh, that's a good one. I, I do like all farms in the domain of Goblin Cities generate more gold. I like the Swarm Darter one. I like giving them a little extra health. They're so dang fragile, and they're really the backbone of my range units, so investing in them is, is worthwhile, I think. The touchables I don't care much about, but the Swarm Darters, yeah. Okay, Builder's Hall, maybe Storehouse. I think for now, probably... No, for now, stick with merch, I think. I've got other things that I need to spend gold on. In fact, I couldn't have even bought any of that stuff anyway, because I'm out of money at the moment. Um, this is the next battle, and this one I think is going to be a little harder, because apprentices always seem to have a way of getting me. But we'll do my best. Here we go. This is a very likely victory, which is encouraging. Alright, I have to be cautious here because all these units have static shield, so anytime I go in for a melee attack on something, I risk taking a... or I risk static shield stunning me. So I have to be very careful and try to use range as much as I can, which is pretty much limited to the Blight Doctors and my hero. I do know that these things do not care for poison. The problem is the guys that can deal poison damage are all kind of far away. Wondering if there's anything else. You know what? Those guys will phase in, most likely. In the past, I've managed to trick them, but I think it's a little risky with... Yeah, I think it's a little risky to try that with all these other mage units around. I was thinking about running up and just shooting them with one thing so that they would teleport and flank. And then uh, I would not have a chance of having a unit. Well, you know what? That might still be a good idea. I think I could pull that off with Mogwai. Or possibly this guy. I think. This is perhaps a little risky, but 
Let's give it a try. You move here. Just take a shot. All right, now he will almost... If I leave everyone else on defense, this wisp is going to teleport right back here. And what I can do is leave... I'll, I'll have Mogwai back here, I think. I'm going to pull this guy back too. For a second, I thought I just accidentally retreated the Marauder. That would have sucked. I need to get the Builder in the back. He's got no business being... In fact, probably should move him closer to the escape. If worse comes to worse. Um, I'm going to leave... I can't risk the Beetle being stunned. And that guy's damaged, so... I'll have him sit back there. We'll put the Butchers up front... The Marauders, well, can't quite get them down there yet, but they're on their way. I think I'm going to have Mogwai here, since I know exactly where that thing's going to teleport. I think having Mogwai here is probably ideal. Uh, I'll put this unit here, put the spider here. And this guy here. I do wish I could block him in more with something else, but kind of stuck. He shouldn't move here and attack because it wouldn't be a flank. If I know how the AI thinks, they won't do that. You know what? I can actually shift everyone just a bit. But I want him far away. No, I want him further away. This 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 should work based on what I know about this game. I was thinking about putting him here, but I, he's too weak. I want him further away from those mages. So they can't do something sneaky. Okay. No stun. will allow me... Man, if Swarm Darters would be really nice in this battle. Mogwai should be able to kill this thing now, I think. Yeah. But Mogwai might also be needed to fire arrows at one of these other apprentices, too. I'm thinking that might be what he ends up doing. I may have the Big Beetle circle. No, the Big Beetle needs to get up in fact, everybody needs to charge these guys, honestly. The butchers, like everybody. But the problem is that I risk getting stunned. That That is the scary part. Just mindlessly charging them could leave me in a very bad situation if I don't do it right. Um, if those guys charged around, they would do 8 to 12 damage. If this guy charged around, he would definitely kill it, but it might leave him stunned. But I could do it in one shot, and he'd be behind everything, so he'd be relatively safe. So I think that's my move. The spider could also almost certainly take it out, but he'd be facing kind of the wrong direction if he did. I'm going to take the big beetle around. Okay, good. No stun. Excellent. This frees up Mogwai to shoot arrows at that one, who's kind of by himself a little bit. And the Borg can go this way and should be able to get around and behind. And now he is stunned. Okay, that's fine. The spider can try to web somebody without any fear of being stunned. As long as he doesn't miss. And I can weaken a unit to make the web more likely to work. Or I could just try to kill the one that's by himself. If the spider does go out here and attempts to web that orc apprentice, I'm going to need a way of putting pressure on all these other guys here. Which I don't know if there's really a safe way to do that. I can maybe weaken one of them. 
not a lot of great options because there's still all four apprentices to deal with they target any single unit that unit's going down unless I can disable one of them there's not even really a guarantee the web will work here I think what I'm going to do is use this guy to weaken that one and then use this guy to try to kill that one and maybe go in for a web on a different one I think that's the best play. I'm gonna move him forward because there's not really anywhere else he's gonna go. Weaken you. That allows this guy to get pretty good shots off on him. And I think I'm gonna just take the three shots instead of moving up. That should be more than enough. And then can easily finish him off with really most anybody. Um, I may use the Wounded Warg for that, so that the more healthy... Because I don't want to risk the... I don't really want to risk the Butcher. Then again, the Butcher... How far can you go? I might need that Warg. Alright, I'm going to use... Well, this Butcher can't actually hit any of them. So he's not really useful on this turn right now anyway. So I'm going to have him go here and just finish him off. Okay, I did get stunned. Which is not good, but I've got more units. I should be able to web one of those guys, I think. I'm thinking what I'm going to do with the spider is possibly jump right in the middle and web that guy, and then use other units to just lower their action points of the others. I can't really think of a better strategy. Although the spider could potentially get behind too, maybe to that spot. And then I could just charge the rest of their line. I think that's what I'm going to do, if he can reach it. Not quite, but he can get here. That's, that's pretty much just as good. I think I'd rather have him on the backside. Okay, 75% chance to web either of them. I'm not sure which one I want to go for yet. I think this guy with more health is the one that's going to go right in the middle of everybody facing forward. So I think I'm going to try to web. And he's got more health. I think I'm going to try webbing this one here. Okay, good, good, good. All right, cool. That leaves me with a few different options. The Marauder could charge that one. It's not going to take much damage in retaliation, and it will lower an action point. And then this guy could charge the other one. But I think I actually want the Warg to charge that one to leave it with less health. Okay, this guy I know is going in the middle. Dang, he got stunned. Okay, um... The Warg Rider could go after him. He's going to take 3 to 5 damage in retaliation. But with this one stunned, that one can move. He'll take a bite from the spider, but he probably will... It's probably something he he would trade. Trade the bite from the spider to move and then shoot at something. Most likely that guy, which is not good. I need to hit this one with something. I think the Marauder might be the unit to do it, but I also want to. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take a chance with the Warg. If I can get a big enough charge and he doesn't get stunned, then the follow-up flank attack would kill him. He got stunned. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to lose a unit. I don't think there's anything I can do about it. Yeah, nothing you can do with the stun if everything gets stunned. Oh, he just went melee on him. Okay, so I lost a Warg Rider. It's replaceable, I suppose. At least goblin units are cheap. I don't like losing stuff, but... If everything gets stunned, there's not much you can do. 
Let's uh, try still to focus on range attacks where possible. They did open up a nice line of sight here, so I can at least shoot at that one and soften him up quite a bit. I'm gonna have Mogwai move up and just use the crossbow, I think. Probably. Uh, that might actually do more damage with two arrow shots. Um, I'm just gonna have the spider eat that guy. I'll take the crit, I suppose. And finish him. And... You can finish that other guy. I think. Yep. Alright. Well, one unit down, but we did clear an important structure. 119 knowledge. That finishes off basic seafaring and does allow me to make a bridge there. Um, now I'm kind of questioning whether I really need it. I might actually make the bridge up here. Oh, crap. Eldritch Pit spawned more stuff. Okay, now I definitely need the bridge, actually. Can I do that? How many movement points does it take to build the bridge? I have to get it on this turn. I think I would like to build it here, right across that waterway, as opposed to here, uh, just because it's a little closer to going up towards the dragons without having to go around. But I don't know how much... Not enough gold, 80 gold required, okay. He could do that. He could move all the way and build the bridge where I want. And then the Theocrat and Mogwai could join together and they could take out that, that stuff right there. But I need money. And that's where I think my diggers are going to come in. So how are you guys doing back here? Yes. Have him go here. Not much he can get. All right, I don't need that much more. That should be more than enough. All right, up to 104 gold. Now I can do this. I think for now I'm gonna save a little bit of money and just move the builder by itself and then make the bridge. Instead of building a road all the way. And boom, everybody is now together. Now I can well, I can't quite get him out of there. But I did lose a unit, and the Theocrat just showed up, so I can gather everyone together and kill that stuff. Slight change of plans of, from clearing these structures, I suppose, but it happens. All right, let's get you guys together. I think I'm going to leave Mogwai's group mostly as it was. I want the big beetle with him. Wherever that is. Where is the big beetle? Oh, it is, it is there. Okay, okay, good. And a lot of butchers. As a matter of fact, Mogwai's got cavalry already in the form of that beetle. So I'll throw a butcher his way. I want the more kind of wounded beat up units with the Theocrat, they will heal a bit faster. All right, and now we can take care of these guys. Presumably also with Mogwai. Now we'll use the big beetle for this one. Or maybe the orc. No, the big beetle has more movement. And sorry, by orc I meant uh, the dwarf. All right, let's get rid of these guys and the rogue will kill that eldritch camp before it can spawn anything else that causes problems. Please don't kill a unit immediately. That would be very rude. Now do 
these guys have resistances. They have 100% blight protection because, of course, they do. Okay. We'll have to do something about that. Probably will weaken them. But first, let's make sure this guy doesn't die, shall we? They don't have any spirit resistance as far as I know. Yeah. Nice having a healer back. to do is move him up probably two more spaces. I'm just worried about that thing come flying in and kill something real quick, but I want to try to weaken that guy. I think I can do this safely. Yeah, as far as I know, I should be safe there. Looks okay to me, and if he teleports in, I'll have plenty of options to punish him for it. You can go here and weaken that one. And I would love to teleport in and web that guy, but that seems a bit too risky for me, so I'm gonna hold off on that till maybe next turn. Actually, that might not be a bad idea because it would, I mean, he can still sprint if the web fails, but he's not going to be able to get as far with fewer points to move. And I don't think these guys do an exceptional amount of damage to the spiders, but if the web fails, then the spider might be in a spot of trouble. I don't know if that's something I want to risk. Let's move you guys up just a little bit. I will probably just settle with taking out the snake, I think, right now. Any other range units that could get the snake safely? Not really. I guess the big beetle should be tough enough to get it, but ooh, I don't know. I think that's actually kind of risky, sending the big beetle out there. I think I'd rather not do that. We'll let the snake come and attack whoever it wishes to attack, but I think I'm going to leave these guys at least on defense here. Move the spiders up just a little bit, maybe to guard these guys' flank. And, uh... Move this guy here. I think that looks okay. That kind of guards Mogwai to some extent. And the builder is good where it's at. Okay. It's about as good as it gets for these guys, I think. Okay. No casualties. Good. Now I can mess these guys up pretty good. Just keep flanking them, hitting them from all sides, and they should go down pretty easily. Uh, might use the... Uh, yeah, he's... He shouldn't be needed for... Oh, I wonder... Wait, can I convert this thing? Monster, magical origin. I think I can. I think I can convert that. If I can, I really should. I don't think I can convert elementals. I'm going to try webbing that with the spider. Unfortunately, I wish I could weaken it with the Blight Doctor, but I'm not going to be able to. Um, fortunately, both armies are kind of split up doing their own thing. 
And this group has three other things it needs to kill. Now, he can handle the snake no problem. Um, but I'm wondering who can handle the air elemental without letting the... You know what, I think I'm going to do this. Move the Blight Doctor here. Kill baby Shock Serpent. Take the spider here. Turn this guy around. Like this. And hopefully Web. Got it. Okay, good. And he can go out here. Kind of guard the... Oh, uh, I don't know. I was thinking he could move further. At least Mogwai can. Mogwai could run out here and charge this thing. And at least take away an action point. Nice hit. You can go that way. You can go this way. And the Theocrat can actually go heal somebody and then convert on the next turn. So probably bestow Iron Heart. Um, web for web for two more turns, so I got a little bit more time. Um, I can actually weaken that thing now, which will make convert more likely to work. And I can also use this guy to get touched by faith. I want Mogwai to get this kill because I got to remember the whole reason I'm out here is to try to level him up. So he needs to kill this guy. You have a better chance if he charges. Doesn't seem like it. Wait, maybe if he goes like this, now he should. Yeah, now he can get him. All right. Okay, there's the level Mogwai needed. Okay, good. I can get Blood Brothers now. Now it's more about the Theocrat and getting that, getting this thing. I'm gonna go ahead and weaken it. And the Theocrat can move here and touch by Faith. And then on the next turn. Actually, I, I could potentially abuse this a little bit. Um, first off, let's do this. Uh, chain steel buffs. So, steel enchantment from this guy. You go steel enchantment, or you will go steal an enchantment from somebody. Webbed for three more turns. That buys me a little bit more time. Okay. And weakened for four. That will allow this Blight Doctor to move over here. Steel Enchantment from that one. So they both use Steel Enchantment so far. Mogwai's healing is back. Or not Mogwai. Um, my Theocrat's healing is back. So I can use healing on this guy. Who needs it. Everyone else is pretty much close to full health, except that war rider. I could probably, I could probably cheese this a bit more if I get another successful web, and I think I did. Oh, but if I let the battle go on too long without damaging a unit, I think it might end. I'm not sure if it webbing counts, but just in case, I'm gonna play it safe and go ahead and go for the convert now. Let's make sure he's still weakened. Okay, he is. So, convert, 50% chance, come on, ah, oh, come on, I have not gotten very lucky with these converts so far this game. Alright, um, maybe I'll just do a little bit of damage to it, just, like, just one shot, maybe even a crappy shot. That'll guarantee the battle goes on for a little longer. I just want to give that other war rider a heal. And then I'm going to use... Then I'm going to use this guy to finish off the... Uh, to finish off this Feathered Serpent. Would have been nice if I could have gotten that, because that would have been another source of healing, which I could desperately use. Sadly, it was not meant to be. RNG hasn't really been on my favor in my favor this episode, I'm afraid. But I did level up both my heroes, so I can get that much-needed Blood Brothers for Mogwai. 
definitely for sure I want that. And then put together a little strike force to go after that uh, structure back there. Which is going to timing wise work out decently well. I think I might want to switch to building housing in this city now. That it can actually grow. Um, I think I'm going to build, yeah I'm going to build housing to try to speed along the growth we can, now that I can clear that. Um, while these units are up here though, I think it's probably still worthwhile to bring everybody over and go deal with these structures. Uh, for one thing, I could convert some more units. And Mogwai will still have plenty of time to get back. But for one thing, I could try to convert some more units. For another thing, everybody's close already. And for one final thing, I could build a fort faster, which I'm, I'm going to do might put it like here actually I might dig it one space into the wall to do it for now that guy is out of movement so we'll have to move kind of like this and maybe send Mogwai another cavalry I guess uh, we'll send him another butcher And I think this army, yep, everybody can reach, so we can get another battle in here in this episode. And uh, this one I will probably have to use as uh, was suggested by, I think it was impregnable. Probably Slayer's Doubt would be good to use on these flyers. And if I can manage to convert one of them, that would be awesome. So who wants to launch the attack? I'm going to let Mogwai do it because they're likely to drop loot. Very likely victory, and I will also get money from this, which is good. Very, very needed. Alright, I'm gonna let those guys uh, come in. I, if, well, yeah, let me see if I can get a Slayer's Doubt on one of them. Or what the odds are, at least. It's okay. Um, I don't mind them flying into the Butchers, though. In fact, the Butchers are a great counter to everything in this battle. There's not really much they can do. I think I'm going to just kind of back up and let them charge into the Butchers. I might not even need to use mana on Slayer's Doubt, but we'll see. I probably may as well cast it on one of them, I suppose. I need those butchers over here much more oh wait that's a butcher down there okay so at least he can get in on things I will put him here and what I think I'm gonna do is try to slayers doubt the flyer that's more in the back already because he can reach the butcher which is fine Mogwai over here. Make sure he's out of range. No, nope, he's not. That guy could come through, but he's going to run into the butcher if he tries that. I don't think he will. I do want to definitely leave the Blight Doctors out of range of those things. Get the wargs down closer. And probably the Theocrat down closer, um, he needs to be in a good position to convert anyway. And uh, I think I will go ahead and at least try... Well, not Divine Protection. That actually is pretty useless for this battle. Slayer's Doubt on this guy. Okay, it worked. Perfect. I won't mind having him here. If the Flyer wants to come this way, that's fine. Charge and just kind of look at me. All right. Okay, charging in not working so well for those flyers. Or oh, well, that was there. That was a different unit. Um, I'm gonna try to convert now. I think because this guy is now up here pretty much by himself. I mean, I can kill the uh, the raptor. Shouldn't be too hard, especially with the butcher still there. So why don't I see? It's 50%. I can improve that a little bit. If I move, I think I'm going to need this guy here to kill the raptor. So I'm going to move the spider here. 
move this guy up along this back line and weaken the spider or weaken the flyer with him. That will improve this guy's odds of converting, which still gets resisted. <sighs> okay. It's not a very, whatever religion I'm trying to convert them to is, is not, apparently not very popular. Okay, well, I'm not gonna pick up a unit from this, unfortunately. Just have to try in the next battle. Just keep trying, eventually it will work. Eventually it'll work. Um, well, now that he is weakened, he should be pretty easy to finish off. I think I still want these guys shooting at that raptor though, just to inflict a bunch of nasty effects. If I move them here, they can actually get a flank. No, they can't quite flank from there. I was hoping they could. don't necessarily want those guys running in and getting themselves hurt over this. Everybody down here should be more than capable of dealing with what they are dealing with. So I'm going to have Mogwai move. You know what? I'm going to have Mogwai move here. He can take shoot a couple arrows at that flyer. It does have projectile resistance, but it's not enough to really matter. They can finish that off pretty easily. That allows the spider to get up here, maybe web this guy. Okay, then they can move down and stab him. That then leaves this war rider open to charge over here. Finish that unit off. How far can he move? Not far enough to do anything, all right. Then uh, at that point, it's just these guys versus flyers. And the butchers are going to win every time in that situation. All right, well, the Theocrat's got some healing to do. Not a lot, though. I think I'm going to uh, pack some more XP. No, that I'll leave the Theocrat for healing. I will go ahead and stack some more XP on Mogwai. Draconian Raptor, the, the, he'll get XP from healing. Actually, yeah, just have, just have these guys finish him off. This unit, this direction. Mogwai, um, they're not Mogwai. This guy I want to try to get close enough to heal the uh, big beetle. If I can get him down there. This will work. Oh wait, no, he's gotta be adjacent for healing, that's right. Which should be pretty easily obtained or achievable, I think. Yeah, because if I move this guy here, I can weaken him. And this one should be able to finish him off. And you can move here. Beetle moves back, receives healing, and he is, I'm still out of range of everything here, so I can move that butcher there and just have everybody else hold the line. Buys me more time to heal more stuff. Okay, uh, I think the org, or the, um, yeah, the goblin big beetle is good enough to finish this guy off. I'll just go ahead and do that now. I'm going to have you use Bastar and Heart on the Butcher. Mogwai, I would like to get a little more XP. Shooting at that guy. Uh, Bastar and Heart has been put on the Butcher, so I can send these guys down here. Uh, you know what? I'm going to try one thing. Let me see if I can phase the spider behind and get a cheap web. Nope, okay. Uh, then I'll probably will just kill him sooner than later. But before I do that, steal enchantment. Steal enchantment. And 
then you can go in and finish the job. All right. Still sucks that I didn't get a flyer, but I'll try to work around it. A big beetle egg. That'll make a nice mount for Mogwai once it hatches. Also, 65 gold. Uh, not a bad melee item. Not the best one either, but still probably worth it. Gives armor piercing, so it can be useful on range attacks as well. As well as Hero Slayer. It's basically this plus Hero Slayer. So I think what I'll do is I'll give this to Mogwai. And I will give the other one to the Theocrat for now. Mogwai will hang on to the big beetle. And then what I can do is move Mogwai back here. Can anyone tunnel? Or does that like need to happen on this turn? No, people are more or less out of movement. Okay, so Mogwai is going to drop this on the ground. No, not so. Drop. I could have just delivered it to the Theocrat rather than do this convoluted thing that I'm doing, but it'll work. Most of the rest of my armies can't move any further on this turn anyway, so I'll put that with him. Buff his attack just a little bit, then I can stick him back with his army. Put Mogwai with his. And the Builder can't do anything right now, so it'll just sit there. I did get another level up for this guy, um, and I do think casting points is a good idea. There are, I think smite's a good idea. Smite is 12, so I can cast it twice with this guy. I think I'm gonna pick up smite now. Undead Slayer would be another potentially useful one. Uh, Chaplain would be great, I would like Chaplain. Oh man. It's a toss-up between Chaplain and Smite. Both of them are very good. I think I'm going to opt for Chaplain, though. The extra morale would be very nice. And he is his own army leader now. I kind of want to get Chaplain and Healing Aura. Holy Champions is good, too. Man, there's a lot of good options here. I, okay, so if Mogwai goes in, if Mogwai goes into a Lich Castle, he would have to be the one, Mogwai would have to be the one leading the army because Blood Brothers. So Holy Champions isn't going to help me clear a Lich Castle. So that's maybe less important. Chaplain, good for general morale. But Smite is a good tactical option. I think I, yeah, I think I'm going to lean towards Smite. Yeah. That's just a useful spell for a Theocrat to have. I do want that. Um, I can pick up Undead Slayer later if I want, but I think I'm going to save his points because there's just a lot of other useful stuff he can pick up. And he's got Divine Justice Stars coming up in three more levels, I think. Yeah, three more levels. Select Skill to Research. I may as well pick something up. I have 111 Surplus. Uh, Dread Siege I could get. I, well, I got 61 plus 111 Surplus, so... Uh, I should pick the highest... Wait, no, no. No, 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 no. Um, if I can get... I think I can get two things for the price of one, possibly three. If I have 61 plus 111, I could get Last Stand and Warp Equipment. Because 61 plus 111 would be roughly 180. No, 170. So I could get, yeah, not quite 180, so not quite enough to get Dread Siege, unfortunately. But I could get Warp Equipment, which is very good. Yeah, I'll get Warp Equipment and then select a new skill to research. I still did the math wrong on that. 
I still did the math wrong on that. I'm confused though because it said I had 111. But then, oh, I already had Dread Siege partially researched. That's why I got confused. Okay. I was thinking the surplus was what you actually had to base. It, it is. The surplus amount is what you have to count, factor in when you're trying to get multiple spells on one turn. It wouldn't have mattered because the cheapest thing I could pick up was 60. So with 111, I was only going to be able to get one spell on this turn, basically like a freebie. But um, the reason Dread Siege, it was going to allow me to research it faster was pretty much simply because uh, I had already researched some of it. I am going to go ahead and get Dread Siege though. Um, because that boost will still help me get it a turn faster, and it gets me that much closer to getting my Theocrat back. It's a danger business, Mogwai. I'm going... I got 104 gold now. Item has arrived. Let's go ahead and put those on, which I should have done at the beginning of this turn. Eternal City. Uh, completed by crap. Somebody... Well, you know what? I shouldn't have really expected to get that because I wasn't really focusing on getting it. My capital city was kind of lagging behind a little bit because I was building settlers and not focusing so much on growth. I do need another settler, but it's 225, so I need uh, to make a little more money before I can get that. Should be able to on the next turn, though. I think I can start getting one, um, except for the fact that I have to build a fort as well as well. Oh, money is sorely needed right now. I think I'm going to do merchandise uh, for another turn. Mostly because the settler's the next thing I need to get out. I also want to put one over here. I just need money. Just lots and lots of money. Alright. These guys can at least begin their way down here. I don't think everyone... Well, it looks like they can actually. In fact, I can tunnel through that, which I probably should do. And then the rest of the armies can just file on through and we can get rid of that Eldritch Pit. I think I will probably do that on the next episode, though. I think we're at about an hour for this one now. So I'm probably going to wrap this one up here. Let me uh, double check and see what I should be doing in Peston. I'm kind of inclined to leave this on merchandise for now. But you guys can kind of let me know what you're thinking. Um, I think with... I think right now I still want to do merchandise because I need to get settlers out sooner rather than later. Um, and I also need to build forts on resources to get long-term gold income anyway. Uh, I know I could convert some of these to wetlands, which is probably worth doing. I don't know how many I want to convert yet uh, because I do still need spells for casting points. Hmm. You know what? Actually, now that I think of it, I'm glad I put Smite on that Theocrat. Because now that he has Smite, and Mogwai would be the army leader because he's because he is my king, if I put Mogwai and this guy together along with a few other units and went after the Lich Castle, I might have a chance. Not a great... Uh, you know what? No, probably still not. Because I don't have enough ways of dealing damage to the enemy. Smite's nice, but I could take out maybe a Dread Reaper with it. Um... I still need better units to deal with the rest of the crap that would throw at me, so maybe that's not such a good idea right now, but uh, we'll see about the future. If I can find some other better support units that could help clear one of those, I would like to get that clear sooner rather than later so that units can move on to other things. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to be it for this episode, guys. So I do hope you enjoyed. Uh, like I said, let me know what you're thinking in terms of what my city's going to be doing, but I think I'm opting for uh, save money, build settlers, build forts. I think that's kind of the game plan as far as I'm concerned. But uh, let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I do appreciate it. And I will see you all in the next episode. Shout out to all my Patreon supporters, including Tier 3 supporters Blitz, Braden, Adam James, Jim Bro, Tarsac, and Tibby and Army. Thanks so much, everybody.